this video we'll tell you the best mounts for astrophotography. Fair warning, we're going into a tunnel of geekiness. If you're not a geek, jump off now. This is a long tunnel, isn't it? Right, we're on our way to meet David from Dark Frame Optics because if you want to know about mounts and you want to know how good they are without any of the, the BS, uh, he is definitely the guy to go and see. I think the man who knows everything about mounts lives here. Oh, hi, mate. I'm in the right place, am I? Oh, just All right, lovely. Cheers, fella. Hiya. <laughs> yeah. How's it going with you then? Yeah, good, thank you. Dark Frame Optics, David's company, is at the end of his garden. Brilliant that you've got a shed, it's, a big it's, shed it's, down it's, the It was a donkey garden. stables and we've converted it. Um, and this has been our workshop for the past five years. Dave's business has exploded, hence the building work to make his shed bigger. So now, come in. So basically, this is it. When the world isn't suffering from a pandemic, this shed is filled with three highly skilled mechanics who help make dark frame optics world leaders in their field. Thanks for seeing me, mate. Not at all. You surely are the best person possibly in the world Ooh, to yeah. talk about mounts. I really think you are because look at this. Yes. Uh, what Dave does is he tunes to an incredible standard uh, mounts from China, are they mostly from China? Mostly from China, sometimes Japan, sometimes from yeah. Europe. It all depends. So far, dark frame optics have turned 900 average quality mounts into sub arc second accurate precision instruments. So we know warts and all, what works, what doesn't, how to make it better. In short, Dave knows better than anyone else on the planet the intimate workings of every mount out there. Okay, so this is what we want to know. You've got thousands and thousands of hours worth of data. So let's run through it, shall we? Okay. What do you think is the best sort of low budget mount? Oh, really simple. I can do this for you in about 20 seconds. Okay. Here we go. So if you're starting out, five kilogram payload, um, EQ32, really, really good. Seriously. It's a really underrated, over, often overlooked. Most people say that you can't image with one of these, but you can. I, you're totally right. On all the forums, they're all said you've got to get an HEQ5, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, it's a minimum. You can image. If you just re-grease it and use standard lithium grease, you'll find that you can balance it properly. That was the key problem with these. People, they'd have this horrible, gloopy, very sticky Chinese horrible grease in it. This will actually take a small 70 mil telescope and a camera and a guide scope, and you've got room, you've got room for manoeuvre. You can tune these things up and you can get them down to sub arc second. Out of the box, the EQ32 will wobble at about 2.8 arc seconds. And that, what that means for the non-geeks, if there are any still watching this, is that you can take a shot of something big like Andromeda and that wobble is less than the size of one pixel. However, if you were really zoomed in and shooting something small, like the Whirlpool Galaxy, then the 2.8 arc second wobble would in fact cover the area of three pixels and that would end up blurring your image. Still, it's fine for the myriad of big space objects out there. Check out the website for tips on how to halve the wobble. And if you send it to Dave, then, well, he'll send it back almost wobble free. You won't even need to guide if he gets his hands on it. That's the budget, but what if you've got a bit more to spend? So, let's. I'm just going to ask you, what's your favourite commercial mount? I have to say, right now, it's a, it's it's so close. It's either the the wonderful HEQ5 by Skywatcher or the EQ6R. Both are amazing mounts, and they fall into a very affordable price range, which is that mid-range thing where you're somewhere where you've stepped up from being a beginner, but you're not spending the the, the amount of a car on a, on a, on a mount. This is good news for me because I've got a very special HEQ5. I just have to say that in here, this. Oh, wow. I remember that. Yes. 
It is absolutely fantastic. I bought a second-hand HEQ5, which purely by chance had been tuned up by Dave. One of the key ingredients is the Rowan Bell upgrade, which in fact you can install yourself. Just doing that one simple um, action means that the mount tracks smoother and it will just about run sub arc second, which puts you into a whole new world of opportunities when it comes to cameras and telescopes. For instance, you can take shots like this, but it's not easy to get the Rowan Belt upgrade in the States. And in any case, Celestron's super popular AVX mount is $250 cheaper than the HEQ5. Celestron AVXs are actually very good mounts, but they do need a bit of fettling to get right. I actually like to say that the Celestron has better pointing, okay, and better, a better go-to setup than Skywatcher. Yes. That's just my personal thing. But the Achilles heel with Celestron mounts are basically the gears. They have reduction gearboxes on the end of the motors and they just wobble all over the place and it creates harmonics and they're well documented. Even so, the AVX is a solid performer and will guide to an accuracy of less than two arc seconds. But if you're willing to spend a bit more and want a mount that just works, just work. and that will happily carry even something as big as a nine and a quarter SCT and guide to an accuracy of less than one arc second, then there is one clear winner on both sides of the pond. I love the EQ6R out of the box. So if you're buying a new mount, it's probably all the mount you'd ever need. There you have it. The EQ6R is the overall winner in the mid price range bracket, which in all honesty is where we're at, isn't it? I mean, we're not gonna want anything bigger than a nine and a quarter SCT, are we? Blimey, look at that. Let's say I've got loads and loads of subs yeah. and I've got enough money now to buy something really yeah. big. What do you reckon for my observatory should I get? Well, um, there's now the new EQ8 Pro, which is basically a reworked EQ, uh, EQ8, which is really, really good, but it comes with a price hike, unfortunately. There's also um, the CGX. This this is um, a CGX. Um, it's not a portable beast, so you wouldn't really be going out too far with that. The EQ8 is even heavier, okay, and it's a lovely bit of kit. But again, don't get me wrong, um, they they are a little bit of a problem child because they are so well set up. Um, you really can't mess with them. So you've got to make sure that they work properly. That's the key thing. So you'll find that some people will start looking at Ioptrons, and the Ioptrons are certainly lighter. The new CM60 or CM70 replacement is certainly one to look at. And I love Ioptron anyway, but by virtue of the fact that they're always innovating. And you'll find that the CM120 again is really good when you go up there. And when you start going up into the higher echelons of mounts, it's really down to personal preference. Um, they all pretty much perform very, very similarly. So it does literally become a law of um, diminishing returns, which is probably why I love my EQ32 so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that light little EQ3, it is very tempting. Just like if someone was wanted to buy an EQ3 new and get it upgraded by you, how, how much is it? Is it 500 quid? No, it's £189 to do that. Say that again. It's £189 to do an EQ3 2 or an EQ5. Okay, so just audience, hello audience, just a quick note to you. I had not come here to, like, I come here to find David's view yeah, on what, yeah, yeah. The, what the best mount is. But actually now, uh, it's far cheaper than I thought it was, actually. <laughs> I thought it cost like no, 500 no. quid no, no, to no, do. No. Uh, but for 200 quid, that is a really serious... I mean, it's a brick... Actually, I'm going to say it. I think you should get an EQ3 or an EQ5. And if you can, if David isn't too busy, he will be, probably. <laughs> but I think you should. You, the better option is to get him to tune it up. If you get the EQ5, you double your payload. So the difference between uh, an EQ3 to an EQ5 is about 130, 140 pounds, but that doubles your payload. So he's, David is super busy. If you get a chance to get an EQ5 and then get it upgraded by Dave here, I, that is the optimum. If he's booked for three years <laughs> and you're never going to manage to get it done, then maybe the mid-level mount, the HEQ5, and, or then the EQ6R will be the what to go yeah, for. Absolutely. Alrighty, thank you Dave. By the way mate, if you if you see the little fluffy thing that goes on here, I think I might have left it in the shed. Now Dave has very kindly agreed to support Astro Biscuit and if you decide to get one of your mounts tweaked by him, 
which I would recommend, uh, then he will throw me some commission, which is fantastic. I've updated the Astro Biscuit website to include the mounts that Dave recommends, as well as info on choosing the right mount for you and also what to look for when buying second hand. Thank you so much for people who have bought from my website. It doesn't cost you any more and it really helps me out because I get a commission. Massive thanks to my patrons. Um, and patrons, if you have any questions on this, just you know how to message me. And of course, lest we forget, Thank you, Richtenstein, for the amazing tunes. And this is Rick's album, link below. Also, it turns out Pink Bunny is a bit of an entrepreneur. He's already made this design. What do you think? I actually like the mug a bit better. See you later. Tatty bye.